Business in the 217 on the WMAY Morning News Feed. I'm Greg Bishop, and we're connecting now with Brian Reeves. He is the Director of Performing Arts Services at the University of Illinois Springfield. Brian, thanks for taking time with us on the WMAY Morning News Feed. Well, Greg, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So, of course, a lot of uh, great acts coming through to the UIS Performing Arts Center there. Uh, I've seen multiple shows. It's also a great venue for uh, even uh, big, uh, you know, uh, swearing in ceremonies for the legislature or for the city council or a variety of things. But uh, definitely a place people get entertained. Uh, Give us some of the upcoming shows that people are uh, anticipating and uh, maybe some things people don't know quite yet uh, more about. Oh, certainly. Thank you for the opportunity. First of all, I want to let make sure everybody knows, just go to our website, uispac.com. That's where you can see the full listing of all events. Uh, but some fun things we have coming up include on October 21st, we have I Mom So Hard. These are two uh, wonderful uh, ladies, comedians that do a co- podcast. It's a, uh, We're calling it a great uh, girls night out. So it's uh, October 21st, I Mom So Hard. Visit our website for a video clip. Once you see it, you'll definitely want to get tickets and come. The UIS Theater, um, UIS Theater has their opening of their fall season and with Stop Kiss. And this is in our smaller, intimate um, UIS Studio Theater located on the ground level of the Performing Arts Center. And then this is fun. If you are a fan of the MasterChef, uh, MasterChef television show, well, we have MasterChef Live on October 23rd. And this includes finalists from the adult version of the show and the junior version of the show. So it's really great for the whole family. Again, that's MasterChef Live on October 23rd. And then finishing us off in November or in October is October 26th. We have Straight No Chaser back in the High Life Tour. And if you've never seen Straight No Chaser, they're a phenomenal a cappella group. Uh, that formed years ago uh, as students at Indiana University, and now they're all grown up and touring the country, taking the um, you know the states by storm. Uh, then lots of other shows in November and December, but I'll let folks go to the website to see those. Yeah, so definitely get it on your agenda. Uh, here in the final few weeks of October, there's some great shows, a variety of different things that you can go check out, from cooking demonstrations to, to comedy uh, to music. It's uh, it's definitely a, a great range of uh, different types of acts that are going to be performing at uh, UIS. We're talking with Brian Reeves. He is the Director of Performing Arts Services at UIS. Brian, give us the website one more time. Sure, it's UISPAC.com. Brian, uh, of course, the last 20 months have been uh, a roller coaster uh, with COVID-19 and how things are uh, you know, being dealt with in various different venues. How's UIS handling COVID-19? Well, we, of course, are concerned about the safety of our student population, our campus family, our patients patrons and the community in general. So we are taking a very conservative approach uh, to our shows as we uh, reopen in this age of COVID. Uh, so right now, since the CDC has declared our county as a, uh, a very high COVID transmission area, we are restricting the number of tickets that we're issuing for events in Sagamon Auditorium to 50% of the seating capacity. That means for any event, we are only issuing 1,000 tickets. Now I do wanna point out, so there's not any confusion, this does not mean there's social distancing in the seating area. So if somebody already has a ticket, you know, they may be seated next to, you know, right next to somebody on their left or their right. But in general, in the hall, we're only allowing a thousand people. And this allows uh, more space in the lobby areas and the restrooms, you know, things like that. So we don't have as many people packed into the uh, facility. Also, in order to attend any event at the OIS Performing Arts Center right now, while we're in this high transmission um, category, we are requiring every person to show proof of a negative COVID-19 test taken within two days prior to the event or proof of full vaccination, including two weeks uh, passing since the final injection. Now, we're not getting into booster shots or anything like that. This is uh, just referring to the original uh, one or two shots that people have. And if they're over 18, uh, we ask that they bring a photo ID so we can verify the paperwork uh, does belong to them. So because of that, we really want to make sure that people, you know, allow an additional 15 minutes, arrive early so you're not rushed, you check in in the main lobby, we have ample staff there, 
Uh, we've done this now for several events. It's gone very smoothly, but unfortunately, we've had to turn away you know two or four people um, from each event uh, because they did not have the required paperwork or they forgot it at home. So please, please, please bring that paperwork. And we really encourage everybody to visit the website before you come to a show because these things are changing. Everything is still in flux uh, because of the COVID crisis. If people do not have the paperwork, but they do have a ticket, is there a refund? Yes, uh, we are offering refunds to anybody that is um, unable or, un or unwilling to um, agree to our COVID uh, guidelines. Also, we want to remind people that obviously we had a lot of events uh, during the COVID shutdown that were rescheduled to this year. If they have their original tickets from that previous date, they don't need to get reticketed. That ticket will be honored for that seat at the uh, rescheduled event. Talking with Brian Reeves, he is the Director of Performing Arts Services at UIS with a whole bunch of shows coming up in the final few weeks here of October, but also big things ahead in November and December and beyond. Uh, so very much looking forward to all the things that uh, UIS uh, Performance Arts has uh, for the uh, for the community to take in. Uh, let's talk about parking. Uh, valet parking, I remember being a student there and seeing that happen all the time, especially whenever the events were happening there uh, at the PAC. Uh, but there's a little bit of a change when it comes to parking. Yes, uh, thank you for asking about valet parking. So um, there is some, some major construction happening right at the area of the, uh, the area of the building where we do valet parking operations. So valet parking is currently suspended at least through the end of October and will continue to be suspended during the COVID crisis because we do not want our staff to get into somebody's vehicle you know, not knowing if they may have had somebody with COVID in that vehicle recently. So for right now, valet parking service is suspended. But the main big thing that we need to make sure every attendee knows now is that UIS parking services is charging all visitors for parking on campus. Uh, so there is a $5 event parking fee, cash only. So when you come to an event at the Performing Arts Center, please have a $5 bill ready to give to the attendants at the parking lot. Um, and you will get into a parking space quickly and you won't uh, miss the start of the show. So bring a $5 bill per vehicle when you come, makes things go very quickly. Brian Reeves, he is the Director of Performing Arts Services at UIS. Uh, greatly appreciate you taking time today and telling us about the shows coming up and some of the things that people can expect when they arrive on location. Uh, but give us the website one more time where people can find all of the upcoming performances yes all the all the information is there at uispac.com and please 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 check that uh like the day before the day of the event also if you're a ticket holder you should be getting emails from us in the days before an event reminding you of any last minute issues with covid mitigation so please read those emails please please check the website brian thank you so much for taking time here on business in the 217 with the wmay morning news feed